a minute to show a test I made using the Learn My Test tool. So what you do is you enter in key terms that you need to know for your test. Then when you're done, you organize the key terms into categories that make sense to you. Once you're done organizing your terms into categories, then you can enter in differences between terms in the same category to give you a higher level of understanding. Throughout the whole process of doing this, you're learning the material. And then Learn My Test takes this information and uses it to generate a practice test on what you've just learned. When you're finished with the practice test, you click OK. It'll give you your results of the test. And then you can click on View All Results. And if you organize the test results into categories, you can see your results on each of the categories and focus your next test on the categories you don't know as well. So maximizing study time. So see, I made 100 on operant conditioning, so that I'm not going to focus on that test for the next one. Thank you for watching this tutorial on how to write an introduction for your research paper. My method includes six steps, which I will show you here and use a corresponding example to illustrate how I would do this. All the information that you need to write your introduction you should be able to find from the introductions of the research articles that you review. The first step is to introduce your topic. So you can see here that my topic is social media use and psychological well-being. So I introduce social media by saying social media platforms have revolutionized the way that humans communicate all over the world. Step two is to use some statistics or facts to help explain why your top topic is important. Like why is it important to study this topic? You can see here that I explained to the reader how popular social media use is by using statistics like it's risen in popularity from 5% to 69% in 2016 or that 86% of young adults use social media sites regularly. S step three is to discuss some of the past research findings that were mentioned on the topic you have been studying. These should be from the introductions of your reviewed studies. So for example, I transition the reader here by saying there's widespread use of social media and, and the psychological community is concerned that it may have a negative effect on psychological functioning. Then I described some studies that found negative findings on social media use and psychological functioning. So for example, Facebook use is negatively associated with academic adjustment and self-esteem. However, other studies have found that social media use is not associated with life satisfaction. Step four is to provide a concluding sentence that sums up the research findings that you discussed. So if you can see here, the first sentence of the findings discusses negative impacts of social media on functioning. And then the last sentence describes that social media does not have an effect on psychological well-being. So I make a concluding sentence here that says the research literature investigating the effects of social media on psychological well-being is conflicted. Step five is to state the purpose of your paper. So here I state the current research paper pro provides an in-depth review of three research studies assessing the effects of social media on psychological well-being. Step six is to provide a transition sentence that ends the introduction and leads into the first study that you are going to discuss in the main body of your paper. So my first article talks about the frequency of social media posts among adolescents and its correlation to psychological well-being. As a result, I'm going to say the first study explains a potential relationship between the frequency of social media posts and adolescents in adolescence and it makes its correlation to psychological well-being. Certain people beg to differ about the length of introductions, but it's my opinion that you want to keep them short and sweet. Introduce the topic, state why it's important, briefly discuss the past research findings, provide a concluding sentence to the past findings, state the purpose of your paper, and then provide a transition sentence. Remember that the best way to study is to take practice tests. If you can't find good practice tests, build your own and learn while you do it using the Learn My Test study tool. It's absolutely free at www.learnmytest.com. Remember to check our growing list of test banks for one in your field of study.